Hello and welcome to this video showing what's new in the latest Zenworks Service Desk version A31. I'm Paul Pedron, the product manager for Zenworks Service Desk. We work really hard to listen to the customer's requests and ideas to formulate features and enhancements to improve the system for your environment. Let's get started. We're going to be covering technical upkeep, some design and features, a few miscellaneous items as well as demos along the way. Let's talk a little bit about technical upkeep in the upgrade process. Specifically core updates, security updates are sent out quarterly so you can keep your appliance secure throughout the year on a regular maintenance schedule. But core updates can also refer to library updates, defects, FTFs, and some features. In this particular upgrade, we're going from version 8.3.0 to 8.3.1 and you will have new features installed for this particular update. Let's talk about the upgrade process. So you'd select the online update tile and you saw the exclamation point indicating that there was updates to be installed. We are registered with the online update channel. So we can now select update now and install the Zenworks Service Desk 831. Now this particular in-place upgrade does not require prerequisite file RPM. Prerequisite is just having the version 8.3.0 appliance available and registration to the online update channel. You can see that the updates have been installed. We're going to go ahead and close and a reboot is required. So we'll go ahead and select that button to reboot. Once it's rebooted, we can log into the appliance console again and the online update channel has showed that 8.3.1 was installed. Going out to the technician portal, you'll see that the database has been successfully upgraded to version 8.3.1. Once you close, you can then log in as a technician and you'll see that the version under the licenses tab will be version 8.3.1. Now for the features and enhancements. The primary features in this particular update is email authentication, both MS Modern and OAuth, as well as user source support for Azure AD. We have the request grid customization for the list down to two columns now. And for the KBA, there's a reset to default. We have the request notes collapse and expand, item search, request info enhancements, reassignments, and some cosmetic changes that we'll go over. Let's look at a few of them. Let's talk about the OAuth feature. For IMAP S, POP 3S, and SMTP, even Office 365, you can actually configure OAuth authentication. You do have to get the tokens generated manually. The outgoing and incoming servers you can mix and match, and that's under Setup, Setup Email. The current view for 830 is this particular GUI. But if we look at 831, you'll see the IMAPS and the POP3S. If they're selected, you'll get this Use OAuth checkbox for incoming server and the OAuth outgoing server button as well. Once configured, you'll get these particular settings that must be filled in in order to do that type of authentication. You'll get your access and refresh tokens cut and paste into this configuration to confirm that you have that particular configuration set up correctly. You can also check the demo OAuth config video using Gmail. The link is in the description of this video. Now let's talk about MS Modern Authentication, which is Office 365 Modern Authentication tightly coupled with Microsoft libraries. This token is generated automatically. Again, the outgoing and incoming server settings can be mixed and matched for different authentication types. As we go through this, you'll notice that there's a new MS Modern Authentication button for incoming server and outgoing server. Once selected, you'll see that there are five required fields in each section, being able to configure modern authentication. You can also see the demo of MS Modern Authentication video the link is in the description of this video. Now let's look at the features supporting Azure AD user sources. 
There's a new setting in the type of user source called Azure Active Directory. This affects the configuration, the technician login and the customer login. The required Azure permissions are required for the user and the groups if you're importing groups. You can view a couple videos pertaining to Azure AD, both the configuration and the logins for technician and customer. The links are in the description of this video. Next are the customizations for the column configurations. You'll see here that the customization for the columns has now been set to minimum of two instead of eight. This helps for mobiles trying to view the request lists. So you can see for each one of these tabs, service requests and incidents, change requests and problems, you can now go a minimum of two columns. You're no longer restricted to eight columns minimum. Also in the knowledge base, if you go to knowledge, you probably found out with 830, we can go to a minimum of two columns as well. And we do have a reset to default. So if you have these settings configured and you don't like them and you want to go back to default, all you have to do is go to the configuration gear and do a reset to default and it will reset for you. Let's talk about the item search. We've been improving this each version by your suggestions and requests. So currently we now have drop downs for item type and category to make it more intuitive for you to find that item. It's involved in the quick request, quick call template, new request, and the KVA, whether you're creating a new one or editing one. Let's have a look. When making a new request, you could see here that the search items has the full complete list of items that's available. Now, if you start filtering on category or item type, then obviously it filters and the items searched are just within the scope of those filters. Next, if you were to look in a quick call, let's open up a quick request and go to a quick call template. We'll select a template and you could see the scrollable items here, as well as if you wanted to search for a particular item or characters, you can then find the item. Let's go to a new request. Creating a new request will give a name to this particular request and then we'll go ahead and look at the search items area. Notice before we go to the categories, notice the full item search is in the window here for item search. As you start filtering for different categories, yes, you can select more than one, you'll be able to see them down below under the items. If you wanted hardware and then you filter further on the type, again, you'll see the items selected down below. Now for the knowledge base, you'll see that we've added under the item, the advanced item search wizard. So if on editing a particular knowledge base article, you could see the advanced item searches there, as well as creating a new knowledge base ticket. You could see here by selecting a category, you could then go to the advanced item search just as you would on requests. This makes it much more intuitive to find those particular items for requests and knowledge base articles. We also did a few cosmetic views that we noticed that people were calling into support about some areas that were not as easy to find or noticeable. One of them is the actions label hovering over. You'll notice that this is modified in the technician request list as well as customer portal request list. And also the request detail print is actually a print preview. So let's look at those. So we've had some people not aware that you can do actually actions from the list. So we've modified this and put the three dots up here with a hover over so that you can actually see what that column is for. 
So these are request actions you can do directly from the list, either my tasks, service requests, incidents, change requests, or problems. Also, if we go over to an individual request itself, the print preview isn't just a print, it's a print preview. So you can actually view the actual request and we put in the close date. So it will show closed or if it's not closed, it'll show not closed. On the customer side, you can also see the actions that can be done with the three dots as well. And now some highly requested features that came in through the ideas portal and customer visits. One is the item unknown, identifying that the type or the category is unknown. Another thing is the escalation technician list is now alphabetized. Notes area, you now can compress and expand it to save on real estate. Ticket notes and attachments have information in the header bar, as well as reassigning a request to another team, the layer one technician. Let's have a look. If we open a new request, we'll see here, it starts off with an item name unknown. So you can identify right off the bat whether it's an unknown item or not. Let's go ahead and create a ticket. We need to add in a customer name. Once we create it and go to that ticket, you'll then see that this is an unknown item number and you can identify that through uh, the pop-out. But if you look at the request list, you can also see that this particular category and type is unknown. That way it's not blank. This also helps in reporting. And that goes for any one of the types of requests. If we go into a particular request, we can now see that this technician list is alphabetized. So if you have a lot of technicians, it'll be easier to find that technician. Also, the notes will expand and collapse, saving real estate room for mobiles and tablets. And as you add a note, notice that the description and request number appears at the top, as well as on the attachments, if you create an attachment. That way, if you walk away and you come back, you'll be able to identify what you started typing that note for. And then being able to reassign a request to another team. This concludes this video showing what's new in the latest Service Desk version 831. You can also find links in the description of this video for some of those other features that are a little bit longer so that you could view MS Modern Authentication, the configuration of OAuth authentication, as well as Azure AD configuration and login for both the technician and the customer. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.